Hello, my friends. Welcome back. My name is Justice Knight. Today, filling in for Lisa Haven. Do you see the title? Who did it and why? It's not a sensational title either. Minutes after Trump leaves office, 175 million of these go active. Once again, not sensational, not overstated. Actually, 175 million of these went active. What are we talking about? What could be one of the biggest domestic spy operations that have ever existed. We've covered this for years now. This is just going to tie together so much of what's transpired. It would have been missed by most. It was a simple Washington Post article. It would have been missed. People would have taken the explanation given by the Washington Post and the Defense Department is, well, that sounds plausible. Let's move on. Come on now. That's why you're a restricted republic, because you know we're going to tell you otherwise and base it in the facts and evidence that you deserve. Now, before I go any further, Lisa and I have a huge favor to ask of you. Again, that discount code FREEDOM. We left active for just another couple weeks. So many have taken advantage of 24 months for $5 a month to get unrestricted, uncensored, unfiltered news in the format you deserve. Why do we create it? Well, you've seen now. Conservative voices, dissenting opinions will be silenced. The administration will not allow for any dissent. So, if you care for the news, the real news, the documented, resourced, and referenced news, get to Restricted Republic now. 24 months, again, for just $5 a month using discount code FREEDOM at monthly checkout, plus 14 days to check it out. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, Lisa will throw it up above me right now. Please click on the link. It would mean the world to us and also all the social media that we trade on. If you haven't been there yet, get over there. That way we can continue to remain in touch with you. But now let's get back to this broadcast. ...by the Washington Post. Minutes before Trump left office, millions of the Pentagon's dormant IP addresses sprang to life. After decades of not using a huge chunk of the internet, the Pentagon has given control of millions of computer addresses to a previously unknown company in an effort to identify possible cyber vulnerabilities and threats. Wow. So most would have just skipped by that. Way too technical. We're going to keep it very high level. So those... Internet professionals out there, please excuse me while, again, I try to keep this very simple because it's not the technicals that's important. It's the purpose that's important. Also, I don't know if many of you realized or not, if you just go down to that little cog at the bottom right, you can turn all of Lisa and my broadcast on to HD. It's a new format of recording that we allow so you can have the best experience possible here and that Restricted Republic. So please do that. Just take a few seconds. Check that out. But now let's get on with this broadcast. Trust me, Lisa would look much better in HD than I do. I'll just say that for you before the comments hit. While the world was distracted with President Donald Trump leaving office on January 20th, an obscure Florida company discreetly announced to the world's computer networks a startling development. It now was managing a huge unused swath of the internet that for several decades had been owned by the U.S. military. Many of you also know that the U.S. military created the internet. The basis, the mainframe, the background, let's call it. Again, overgeneralization. So it would make sense that they would hold a major amount of IP addresses. Well, why now all of a sudden the change, the release is the question. The company, Global Resource Systems LLC, kept adding to its zone of control. Soon it had claimed 56 million IP addresses owned by the Pentagon. Three months later, the total was nearly 175 billion IP addresses now activated. That's almost 6% of the coveted traditional section of internet real estate called IPv4, where such large chunks are worth billions of dollars on the open market. But that's not what the government chose to do. They didn't choose to sell off these IP addresses. No, they chose to activate them and funnel them through a company called Global Resource Systems, LLC. That's right. Incorporation date, as you see there, let's zoom in, was October 13th of 2020. I'm going to let that sink in for a minute. It's a fairly new company to funnel 175 million IP addresses through, but there's a history there. Here's their office in Plantation, Florida, and it's not the whole building. No, that's a bank underneath. They actually just lease out a portion of the top floors. When you go to their website, you find no activity. Now, remember this incorporation date of December 13, 2020, knowing that election day was November 3rd of 2020. And also pay attention to the directors and officers, especially the name of Raymond Salino, because we've seen that name before. 
I'm going to go back to an old article on Wired. Law enforcement appliance subverts SSL. I know, again, we're not going to get hyper-technical, but we're going to give you the important little bits of this story because it is an important story. It really connects the dots of who this unknown actor is with this small unknown company in Florida who now has achieved, and wait you see the percentage of internet they now control. Back to the Wired article. At a recent wiretapping convention, it was discovered that a small company was marketing internet spying boxes to the feds. The boxes were designed to intercept those communications without breaking the encryption. If the company is selling this to law enforcement, the article went on to state, and the intelligence community, it is not that large of a leap to conclude that other, more malicious people have worked out the details of how to exploit this. Who would those people be? The company in question is known as Packet Forensics, which advertised its new man-in-the-middle capabilities in a brochure handed out at the Intelligence Support Systems Conference of Washington, D.C. Notoriously capturing a Sprint manager bragging about the huge volumes of surveillance requests it processes for the government. Here's the convention. This was back in 2019, again held in Washington, D.C. Intelligence Support System for Electronic Surveillance, Social Media and Dark Web Monitoring, and Cybercrime Investigation. So who's a member of Packet Forensics? Well, their spokesman was Ray Salino. He initially denied the product performed as advertised or that anyone used it, but in a follow-up call the next day, Salino changed his stance. The technology we are using in our product has been generally discussed in internet forums and there is nothing special or unique about it. Nothing special or unique about it. This officer of this small company now in Florida who's controlling a huge swath of the internet handed to them by the Department of Defense who also was contracting through packet forensics for spy boxes to the U.S. government. So fun when you dig into these stories, isn't it? To use the packet forensics box, a law enforcement or intelligence agency would have to install it inside an ISP, an internet service provider, and persuade one of the certificate authorities using money, blackmail, or legal process to issue a fake certificate for a targeted website. Then they could capture your username and password and be able to see whatever transactions you make online. Well, that seems awfully sloppy and messy, doesn't it? Oh, remember this now. Three months later, the total was nearly 175 million IP addresses. So did they find potentially a way around having to install it inside an ISP and rather just control the IP addresses themselves? Because most would have thought the Pentagon would have sold it. I mean, with everything happening within the Biden budget, you would have expected the government to go ahead and sell those. Here's one example. The Internet Samurai says it'll sell 14,700,000 IPv4 addresses. And how much was that worth? 300 million plus. The government just released 175 million. Go ahead and do the quick math and tell me how much that was worth. But something must be worth more to them. Something must be worth more. Auspicious timing, of course. Right, it's the Biden administration takes office. So let's go just a step deeper now. The mystery of AS8003, that's that swath. In this article, amazing analysis. Following the increase, AS8003 became far and away the largest AS in the history of the internet, in the history of the internet, as measured by originated IPv4 space. By comparison, AS8003 now announces 61 million more IP addresses than the now second biggest AS in the world, which is China Telecom. And over 100 million more addresses than Comcast, the largest residential internet provider in the US. So this new swath that was released, you see there on the far left, 8003, now overtakes everybody as the largest band of IPv4 addresses. I just really wanted to put into context for you how big of a maneuver this actually is. I'm not going to let the details get lost in an article that's simply just giving the Department of Defense a, a quick way out. They released a statement, the Department of Defense, here. Defense Digital Services, DDS, authorized a pilot effort advertising DOD internet protocol space using border gateway protocol. This pilot will assess, evaluate, and prevent unauthorized use of DOD IP address space. Additionally, this pilot may identify potential vulnerabilities. This is one of DOD's many efforts focused on continually improving our cyber posture 
and defense in response to advanced persistence threats. At the very bottom, the author states, I interpret this to mean that the objective of this efforts are twofold. First, to announce this address space to scare off any would-be squatters, and secondly, to collect a massive amount of background internet traffic for threat intelligence. That's the key phrase right there. Who is this SWAT team of nerds, as they call themselves, on the U.S. Department of Defense website? Well, we'll go down into it. What do they do? Currently, DDS is partnering with the National Security Agency to cyber protect Operation Warp Speed search for a COVID-19 vaccine. DDS has also partnered with the medical community to develop COVID-19 system checkers with DOD personnel and their families can use to figure out if they need to get medical care. Going further, what else do they do? Another important ongoing program is the Counter Unmanned Aerial Systems Initiative, which addresses the problem of being attacked by swarms of small, hard to detect unmanned aircraft system. Oh, now many of you are gonna start tying that into Sentient and I will be there shortly. So the specifics of what the effort is trying to achieve remain unclear. This is back to the Washington Post article. The Defense Department declined to answer a number of questions about the project. A Pentagon official declined to say why Goldstein's unit had used a little-known Florida company, which I showed you, to carry out the pilot effort rather than have the Defense Department itself announce the address through BGP messages, a far more routine approach. What is clear, however, is the Global Resource Systems announcements directed a fire hose of internet traffic toward the Defense Department's addresses. He said monitoring showed the broad movements of internet traffic began immediately after the IP addresses were announced January 20th. I want you to piece that together, that date of January 20th. Many things have occurred. The Biden administration coming in. This is after what happened at the Capitol. Suddenly, this huge swath of IP addresses are released. You now see that they're declaring there that a huge amount of internet traffic will now be funneling through this small company in Florida back to the Department of Defense. That we concluded prior the same company had been involved with providing backdoor access to the intelligence communities, except now they found a more efficient way potentially to get through all this information. So as this article states here, is the big internet mystery now partially solved? Incorporated in Delaware, remember this now, and registered by a Beverly Hills lawyer, Global Resources Systems LLC now manages more internet space than China Telecom, AT&T, or Comcast. The only name associated with it on the Florida Business Registry, which I showed you, is that of a man listed recently as a 2018 in Nevada corporate records as a managing member of cybersecurity internet surveillance equipment company Packet Forensics. The company had nearly 40 million in publicly disclosed federal contracts over the past decade. And who were they involved with? The FBI and the Pentagon's Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, which is DARPA. Packet Forensics. Involved with the same gentleman who was just given access to the largest swath of addresses that have existed in modern history. An unknown, what would appear to be a shell company for all intents and purposes. The same gentleman involved in this law enforcement appliance that you remember now, Packet Forensics, that could act as the man in the middle capabilities, coming off Sprint, and if you remember, is bragging about the amount of surveillance requests it was receiving from the government. This company that continues to sell the lawful intercept equipment, according to its website, one of its current contracts with DARPA, is for harnessing autonomy for countering cyber adversary systems. A contract description says it's investigating technologies for conducting safe, non-disruptive, and effective active defense operations in cyberspace. Contract language from 2019 says the program would investigate the feasibility of creating safe and reliable autonomous software agencies that can effectively counter malicious botnet implants and similar large-scale malware. So now just think about all this for a moment. This huge amount of dormant IP addresses springing to life. The real estate, by the way, which quadrupled to 175 million addresses, 125th the size of the current internet. What did the experts say? It is massive. That is the biggest thing in the history of the internet. Just occurred. Under cover of Trump leaving office, and the Biden administration coming in. Remembering the military hopes to assess, evaluate, and prevent unauthorized use of the Department of Defense IP address. But do they? Because if you remember, 
Not so long ago, Lisa and I covered Sentient. Again, Freedom of Information Act uncovers what Sentient was allowed to do. Remembering within this executive order, agencies within the intelligence community are authorized to collect, retain, or disseminate information concerning United States persons. I want you to remember that now. Because immediately when the Biden administration takes office, the events at the Capitol occur. The Trump administration is outbound. Suddenly, this huge swath of ISP addresses turn on, funneled back to the Department of Defense in an effort to collect a mass amount of data, something unseen in the history of the internet. And don't tell me for a moment that many of us wouldn't believe that to be more nefarious than the Washington Post article declares or the reasoning given by the Department of Defense. So be aware, my friends, as we've reported on to you, the intelligence community has once again been expanded to something unseen in the history of the internet, according to the experts. So I ask you, what do you believe is happening? We look forward to seeing it in the comments below. We hope again, I hope you subscribe to Lisa's channel if you haven't. I hope you'll subscribe to mine if you haven't. We'll hope you'll get over to Restricted Republic where we provide even more details on items like this. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about the federalization of the police forces. And do you know what that means? And while Elon Omar and all are calling for the federalization of the police departments, do you understand what that means? It all goes hand in hand with what I just reported to you. But before I close, I need you to go to healthwithlisa.com, a product that Lisa believes in more than anything I've ever seen her discuss. This product right here, Biotrust Anti-Collagen. She adds it to her coffee, flavorless, an amazing product, an amazing deal. Right now, 51% off. I don't know if you read the back of this at any moment in time. Paleo-friendly, zero carbs, non-GMO, gluten-free, dairy-free, hormone-free. What an amazing product to get your collagen. Right now, 51% off, healthwithlisa.com. We can't thank you enough for being here again. Until next time, Godspeed and God bless. Really hope you enjoyed this. I can't wait to see your comments. On behalf of Lisa Haven, signing out.